It's the end of 2022 and time to think back on the games that came out this year. Yes, some games did come out this year. Enough, in fact, for each of us to have picked one as our favourite of 2022. Coming up today and tomorrow, it's the Outside Xbox and Outside Extra crew's individual picks for Game of the Year, kicking off today with Luke and Alan from Outside Extra. Come on back tomorrow to see which games Jane, Mike and myself picked, and let us know your personal pick for GOTY in the comments. In a way, my job today is an easy one, because I think, all things considered, I'm not the only person on the squad who would have loved to pick Elden Ring as their best game of the year. So, on the one hand, easy one, because Elden Ring is clearly the best game of the year. On the other hand, my job is a tricky one, because I have to sum up briefly why Elden Ring, which is a massive and very complicated game, is so good. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Weird, isn't it? Because I finished Elden Ring before you did. Yes, thus, you did. Thus meaning I'm better at it than you are and <laughs> like it more. And yet you didn't choose it as your game of the year, Andy. Well, I said, can I do Elden Ring? And I said, no, I'm doing I'm it. <laughs> but Andy, did you finish Millicent's questline? Yes. Actually, yes, you did, because I was like, I've accidentally killed Millicent, I need you to go and do this. Yeah! <laughs> Elden Ring, of course, is by From Software, the studio that is famous for Dark Souls and Bloodborne and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice and Demon Souls. You probably already know this, but it bears repeating, I think, in this instance, because Elden Ring is From Software displaying, like, a more intense focus than they possibly ever have before, because the combat in Elden Ring is so slick, it feels so good, it's so tight. The boss design, the, the character design, another thing that From Software is, is famous for is like as good as it's ever been. The NPC quest lines are as inscrutable and complicated and weirdly engrossing as they ever have been. Oh, good heavens. Clench your teeth or something. <gasps> So this is basically, on the one hand, a culmination of everything that From Software has been making, kind of all crescendoing to this game. So on the one hand, it like could not be tighter and more focused. On the other hand, this feels like the game where From Software were like, you know what? We don't care. <laughs> Go nuts. Do what you like. Because compared to the other games that they've made, this one just does not care how you play it. And once you wrap your head around that, that is so exciting and liberating. You can go anywhere you want. You can just run past anything. But pretty much there is very there are very few obstacles in the game that you can't just run past on your horse if you don't want to fight them. You start coming up against these bosses that are absolutely ludicrously overpowered. Like I'm I'm talking like just bonkers powerful. Like any hit they deliver will will very nearly kill you or kill you outright. And what the game basically says to you is like, well, maybe you should be as as overpowered as these bosses are. Go figure that out. And so you do. You you wander off into the into the wilderness, uh, and you get on the wikis, and you go online and find the threads and see what everyone else is using and what everyone else is recommending, and you start piecing together a build that is so ludicrously strong that you are basically the the god king boss of Elden Ring, and suddenly, as this very, very, very lengthy game starts to unfold, it's so long that the amount of levels you can gain and the amount of equipment you can find, it all starts to stack up so ridiculously that, but that, like, towards the end, you are basically, like, becoming unkillable. It's a very different feeling to the Dark Souls games or the Bloodborne games, which, like, all the way through, you you know, like, you're the underdog, it's difficult, like, and you things aren't really ever that different to how you started. It's like you you have to play those games on their terms, you know? But Elden Ring just doesn't care. And I think it's really cool and interesting that From Software basically kind of loosened their grip in that way. And were like, go become an unkillable god. And I did, and it's brilliant. And especially playing Elden Ring at the time when it came out and when everyone was uncovering its secrets and you would get like daily a new YouTube video which is like 
best farming spot. One billion trillion runes per hour. This build breaks Elden Ring. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you'd watch it, those videos, and you'd go like, wow, that build does break Elden Ring. But there were like, 10 of those popping up a day and they were all with different weapons and different ashes of war and different flasks of wondrous physic and all of the weird and wonderful modifiers that you can put on your character to make them so uh, completely like bonkers powerful. When I was playing through Elden Ring I settled on uh, this um, katana that was heavily favoured in the meta called Moonveil because uh, it had this special attack that basically dealt wild amounts of poise damage. And then eventually, you know, they nerfed that a little bit and then they nerfed a bunch of the other cool weapons. But like, but not very much. Like, there's not an enormous effort made to balance this game. And that sounds like a criticism, but that's not how I mean it. Because compared to playing through Dark Souls 3, which is like a real grueling test of your reflexes and timing and all that kind of stuff. It's really fun in Elden Ring to just have a bit more freedom. <laughs> there is an item in Elden Ring that you may well have heard of because it summons a clone of you who is like stronger than you and there's like is you as a ghost and they're just gonna fight alongside you and they're so strong. And I think there's something so inherently funny about summoning a clone of yourself who also has two katanas and is just going like that. And you know, just basically putting together these builds that wreck up the hardest bosses in the game. So I really, really think it's very cool that From Software did basically let you get way more creative and go way wilder with your RPG journey than they have in any of their games previously. It's such a rare thing uh, in video games for a game to be as hyped as Elden Ring was and then to just not only deliver on that hype but then to be about maybe six times as big a game as anyone thought it was. I remember before the game came out From Software kind of stirred up some controversy by saying oh yeah we reckon you can probably beat Elden Ring in about 30 hours if you're sort of you know just focusing on the main quest and people are like what that sounds like a pretty short game. I don't know how they're doing it in 30 hours. Like, I would think I was, I don't know how long I was playing it for. I mean, I was trying, you know, I was trying to do everything, but you know. I spent 30 hours just killing fish people in the room farming school. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Every second was a joy. It, it's very, very hard to state how vast it is. The world is enormous, but there are loads of open world games that have a big map to explore. This is it's got so many different zones and there's so much variety but each one feels like it's been crafted with such care and then you realize that there's basically the whole world map again but underground and full of ants there's so much game in this game and they haven't even released any DLC yet at, at the point where I'm recording this. Basically, I, I, I had so much fun playing Elden Ring. I was so lost in it, so involved in it and thought it was absolutely brilliant. And I basically felt by the end of it so full. I felt like a hog at the trough. There was so much game. I, I, I overindulged. I became painfully full of Elden Ring. And like, I've basically just spent the rest of the year reclining on my haunches and <laughs> patting my stomach in contented satisfaction and rubbing it and going, mmm, and purring contentedly because I'm so full of an enormous heaping dish of Elden Ring. It's true, folks, he did. Mmm. We asked him to stop. <laughs> it's... Wouldn't. So, 2022 had some really, really good games out this year, and uh, whoa, there are some good games. Well, I, you know, well, I'd like to name two. I'm going to give an honourable mention to God of War Ragnarok, which absolutely smashed it out of the park with the Leviathan Axe. It was so good. It had so much heart to it. The writing in it is, is really funny and really heartfelt. It, it just. Mwah. Well done, well done to all of the creators. Of the year. But no, I ha I couldn't I couldn't take it away from just I had so much fun with this game. Stray. Look. I'm just remembering the Xmas challenge. 
Oh, the crisp. Yes, of course. You know, you're allowed. You're allowed to be mad at the little kitty, but the kitty is so cute. <laughs> I love this game so much. Oh my god. I <laughs> this is a game that I'd been looking forward to for like literal years and when it arrived I was so glad that it did not disappoint. It the the work that went into it, the, the animation on the cat alone was brilliant, but then the fact that they built like a really fun and intriguing game, the story around it, this dystopian city that you're exploring and uncovering and talking to all the residents of, all these lovely little android characters, you really, you really just get lost in that world in the best way and you just do feel like a cat. And as a kid, I really wanted to be a cat because cats don't have to worry about things like growing up and having to do things and pay taxes. So like, <laughs> this is my childhood joy, like, you know, dream of being a cat. And yeah, I had a lot of fun. I streamed the whole thing over on Outside Extra and just everyone watching along and just being like, oh, what a little cat. It has a dedicated meow button. <laughs> There's a meow button. <laughs> it's so cool to meow. There's all the different extra things that you can do around the world, just things dotted and littered around the world, like the rugs that you can scratch into, make biscuits, and it's really cute. The balls, like in the Christmas challenge, that you can just like, and just, just pat, bat it around. And you got like the paint cans. It's all right, Andy, don't worry. <laughs> There's the paint cans that are like on the edge of ledges, and you're just like, Boop. Just do cat things. <laughs> and scratch the wallpaper and just the fact that also the, the meow button, you can just use them all the way through the cutscene. <laughs> so you can just be like, meow, 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 meow. Great. Also at the end, no spoilers, absolutely sobbed. I did not think that I was gonna get that emotionally. I knew I was gonna be like, <laughs> of the cat, but like the story itself and the other characters that you interact with and travel with, I really got attached to all of them. And I thought they were just, you know, beautifully crafted characters in this very clever. Oh, also the music. I just keep, it's one of these things that I keep remembering. Oh yeah, and there's this thing. Like the, the world is all brought together just by the music. The music that comes in when you as a cat can find there's different places around the world that you can just press triangle and the cat will just curl up and sit there and it will just slowly pan out with this really beautiful and chill music. And I'm like, this is the, the greatest thing that has ever happened on the PlayStation 5. What are we, why is this so good? And just the cat purring with the, the amazing PS5 controller, just purr, like, cause it's got the little speaker whenever you meow, meow, it meows out there. Whenever the cat purrs, it purrs through there. And just the vibrations of the cat purring. <sighs> like, it's one of these games as well that it's really easy to talk about to people who don't play video games. It really transcended games media because suddenly like everyone was reporting on the cat game that all the cats, people's pets are watching them play this video game. And there's like, you know, it was covered first in games media and then people outside were like, oh, everyone's cats are watching the little cat make a little meow sound and that's, isn't that cute? And it it's great. It just shows the different things that we can do with games because games are often so combat focused and I love that. You know, Ragnarok, I was throwing that axe around having a blast. Uh, but it is really interesting to have these puzzly games you where you're just... <laughs> no, no, you can uh, laser the aliens with a UV light. So you make them explode, you can do that. But also you can play the game completely not doing that and just running away. It's just parkour as a cat just exploring the city and it's so well designed, so beautifully designed. Like the lighting alone in it is outstanding. It has this real lovely feel of all the neon lighting. It, it's just got such a good atmosphere to it. I like literally just could talk for ages and hours and hours and hours. I'll try not to, please stop me. Um, <laughs> it was worth the wait. The cat is adorable. I, like I want the cat so bad, little Jonesy we named on Outside Extra. Story sucked me in, the world sucked me in, just like, just I was just completely enveloped in that and I really looked forward to every time that I got to stream it for two hours on a Monday. It was an absolute joy and I heavily recommend it. It's also brilliant in that it's like, you know, between five and eight hours, depending on how much time you spend scratching on walls. 
<laughs> and sitting in a corner all curled up and just listening to the fairy. <gasps> But it's it's just that lovely num 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 bite sized game, completely whole deal like whole package, just a lovely experience. I'm wearing orange, so we. <laughs> and I think more we should have more video games like it. Please, let's do a dog one next. That'd be good. That'd be really cute. Give the little canines a cute little time in the little dystopian city, helping a little robot, <laughs> a little drone. <laughs> yes, yes, game of the year uh, look i know that uh god of war ragnarok is coming out and everything but like outstanding